Hi everyone, welcome back to Game Maker Cast. It's Mickey, and in this video tutorial, we're going to be taking a look at some puzzle switches here. I have a couple different doors, these are just images, and then I actually have some collision objects down here where these switches need to be in a specific order before the doors turn on. So you can see it supports multiple switches, it supports just one, and you can really have a number of different combinations. With this collision object here, this acts as a door where my player cannot go through it, but as soon as I turn on the switch, I can go through it. If I turn it off, the collision object is back on. And you can see that we also have the puzzles uh, with the uh, collision object as well, so that is just two of them have to be on, and then it will turn back off. So this tutorial, we're going to learn how to make these, and so yeah, let's let's close this and dig right into it. All right, so this is the basic project here. You can see we have some sprites, and inside our objects, we just have a lever. We have a object solid, and this is just a square, even though the mask itself is the full square. I'm just doing the outline to show that there was a sprite behind it. And then you can see inside we have doors, we have the door image, we have a door solid, and these are these are two different doors and we'll get to it. And then we have a door parent. So inside the room, if we look at it, you can see it's completely empty. I have a collision uh, layer and then instances. So on the instances, I'm gonna go ahead and put a door image there. And I'm gonna put in, let's just say one lever or switch for now. Now, the one thing to look at this door object, which is a parent, you can see that if we bring up variable definitions, I have a variable definition for name. So this is gonna be the name of the door that we're gonna be opening. So this is, think of this as a tag. So right now I just have it as default door. So if I go to room zero and I open up the door image, so double click, and then I click on variables, so you can see that we have the variable here and it's default value is default door. So I can hit this pencil icon and I can just change it to say door underscore A. Now if I close that and I take a look at the lever, let's actually open up the object. You can see that if we go to variable definitions, I have a I have it pretty much set up the same thing. So, sorry, the same way. I have a door name, so this is gonna be what door this lever or switch is going to open. And I wasn't really sure what to call this variable, so I just have it kind of specific. So this is has to be enabled. So whether or not this switch is going to be enabled or not in order to open up the door. So if you can have two of these, one you may need to have enabled, the other one you don't need to have enabled. So if I go back to my room and I look at this lever and I go to variables, well, I'm gonna have to fill in that door name that we put in, which was door underscore A. And I wanna make sure that we have to turn this switch on. So even though we've done this little bit and it came kind of with this project that I'm giving you, we still have to write a bunch of code. So let's see, where should we start? Why don't we start on the lever because we have it in front of us here. So if we go over to the create event, you can see we have a couple variables that I haven't used yet. We have enabled and we always set it to false. Um, this is really, you could probably set it to has to be enabled or you could set it to true. This is just depending on how your image is set up and my images are always set up as the lever is off first. Next we have a target and we're gonna assign that in just a moment. This basically is referring to what door we're gonna be looking up. So in here, we're gonna create a new event. We can't do the code that we're gonna be using in the create event because the way that Game Maker works is once the room is loading, it will create these two objects here. And we need both of these objects to be already created, and they also need to have ran their creation events before we take a look of what is in the room. So we're gonna have to use a special event in this case. So we'll say add event, let's go down to other, and we will say room start. So this is gonna be after all the objects have been created and placed in the room, all the creation events have ran, this is the event that we're going to run next. Now what we need to do is we need to find the door and hopefully the doors in the room that we are assigning in the variable definitions. So to do this, all we need to do is we need to find the 
total number of doors and loop through them. So we could just write a for statement. We could say for var i equals zero, and then i is less than the instance underscore number, and we're looking for the object underscore door. Now remember, even though we placed in the object image, we're gonna look for the parent object because it will include any doors that we have as a child. So we're gonna get the number of doors that are in our game, and then we are just gonna increase our index by one. The next we're gonna do is we're going to store the instance, instance find of that particular door that we found at that instance. So it's gonna start at zero, so it's gonna say, okay, get me the first door in the room, and then the next one will say, get me the second door, the third, etc., cetera, et cetera. Uh, we can add a little if statement in here just for reasons that who knows maybe something happens in the instance that can't find anything so we can say if instance does not equal no one we don't want our game to throw an error the next thing we're going to have to do is check to see if this lever that we assigned in our room if i click on it here if the lever, the door name is equal to the name that we gave our door itself. So to do this, we can use an, another if statement. We could say if, and I'm gonna convert everything to lowercase. Just, just sometimes we may forget if we have a capital or a lowercase, it's just better this way. So we could say if string underscore lower, and we're gonna to refer to the instance that we found. So we know we're on a door. So we'll say if instance dot name, and remember that is the variable definition here that we're referring to. So if the name is equal to the string underscore lower, so if the name is going to be, sorry, be equal to the door underscore name, then we know that we have found that particular target. And then we could set this target to the instance. And then we can just break out because we do not need to continue to go through our doors that are in the, in the level. There's no reason we found it. We're only using one door. If you were doing multiple doors, you'd probably use an array. So now that our door is set up for the lever, we have to do a very similar thing on the door itself. So let's go over to the door image. Now, right now we are only working with one lever, but what if we add in a, another lever? Then what are we gonna have to do? Well, let's actually, let's make it work with both just so we can see what happens. So I'll change the variable definitions and I'll change this to door underscore A, and this one does not have to be enabled. So let me save my room and close it. And inside the door image, let's also add the same event as we had before. So we'll go down to other and let's go to room start. So in here, we're going to be finding all the different level levers or switches that refer to this door. Now I'm gonna be using an array and don't be scared or anything. This array is gonna be fairly simple. And it's gonna be quite easy and hopefully you'll, you'll understand it because we're gonna write it pretty straightforward here. So the first thing I wanna do is I wanna start off with an index. So I could say the array index is going to equal zero. So this is just gonna be the start of our array. Next, we're gonna loop through. So we'll say for i equals zero. i is less than the instance number. So the number of, you guessed it, levers in our room. We'll just increase i by one and I'll get my formatting there. So we're gonna loop through each one, and just like we did in the door code, we'll say var instance equals instance find, and now we're looking for the, uh, not the character, we are looking for the lever, and we are referring to whatever one we are currently on. So the first one, the second, the third, et cetera, et cetera. So what we can do here is just like we did before, all we have to do is compare Let's get rid of the parent, but we are gonna compare the names of the door and the name of the door name on the lever. <laughs> you could probably come up with some different variable names, so let's just go with this. So we'll say if string underscore lower, and we'll say instance dot door name. So again, we have found the lever, so we are referring to this variable up here. So if the door name is equal 
to the lower case and we have just name here let me go up then what we want to do well all i want to do is add this particular instance this lever into an array so i will say lever array and i will give it the array index which will be zero to start off equals instance and the only thing I want to do here is I want to increase the array index by one. So I can say plus equals one or plus plus. And so in the end, what we're going to have is an array with all the different instances that refer to this door. Now this may seem a little bit scary, but don't worry, we're almost done. What we need to do now is on the lever itself, when we press this button, we need to call a function on the door because if we run our game right now let's see make sure we don't have any errors i can turn these on and off and nothing is happening even though my door knows of these two different levers it doesn't know how to turn on and off so to do this inside the lever inside the left press option here or event we're going to change the code a little bit so right now we have a, an enable function. So what we want to do is set enable to not enable. So this will turn it to true or false. So by default, this is false. When it comes in, it'll say, okay, don't make it false. So then it turns it to true. Next time we'll say, okay, well don't make it true. So it turns it to false. And then what we need to do is with this target, we can write a little if statement, we'll say if target not equal no one so we know that we have a door we'll say with target and we're going to call another special event we're going to call a user event so we'll say event underscore user zero and you may have not seen this before but all this allows us to do is in the target which just happens to be our door all the way here <laughs> we can add a new event and we can go down to other and then we can go to user events and because we're using event zero we'll choose this item here just think of it as writing a script but only this particular object has access to this event itself so in this particular event what we need to do is we need to loop through all of the different levers or switches that we have and we need to figure out if we can unlock the door or not so to do this let's first start with a variable called can unlock and I'm going to set this to true so right now we know that we can unlock the door but what we need to do is we need to loop through so we'll say var index equals zero we're going to loop through the lever array that we created so we'll say index is less than array underscore length 1d one dimension because we just have a one level domain so we'll say lever array and then we want to increase that index so right now, if we had two switches associated with this door, this would loop over two times. So the next thing we need to do, again, is grab that particular instance, lever array, and we are looking at the index because we are looping through. And then we could say if the instance dot has to be enabled, um, not equal to the instance dot enabled, then can unlock equals false and we don't need to continue through our our loop here and at the bottom we'll say if we can unlock and i'll explain this in one second here if we can unlock our image underscore index it's going to be one otherwise our image index will be zero which is still locked okay so going back up here just a little bit so i can explain this we grab the instance that refers to the current door that we're on and then we say if that instance if the variable has to be enabled does not equal the enabled state so remember when we click on the lever itself we change the enable state to true or false and then when we have it inside the our room we have to set this variable here to true or false so we're saying if, if this variable does not equal enable then well we know we can't unlock that door so we just set unlock defaults and then we switch our image at the end 
So I'm just going to make sure that everything's hooked up. I think it is. So let's give our game a try. Let's see what we have here. So I should be able to click the bottom one and nothing happens. But if I click the top one, you can see that's unlocked. If I click the bottom one with the top one, this should lock it again because that's not the right, the right setup. And you can see what I can do is I can go into my room and I can go and I can add, actually I could even remove just this one switch and it should still work. I should be able to unlock my door and I can come back and I can put in a whole bunch of different switches. And as long as the variables are set up correctly, door underscore A and this one needs to be turned on. And we will say this is door A. Door A. So as long as everything is set up pr properly, then we can have a number of switches work with that particular door. Now the other one that I wanted to do, because right now this is just a single door image. So in our code, in our platformer, normally what we have is we check for an object solid. So what you, sometimes what people will do is they'll have a, they'll have a layer up here and then they'll have that object here and they'll kind of just scale it out if it needs to be scaled out. But I want to make it smarter than that. So let's get rid of this door image. And actually let's just use the one here. And we're gonna, we're gonna bring in this door solid. And we're just gonna place it in here. And we're gonna copy that door A name and put it into the door solid here. Okay, so in this door solid, all it is is currently a empty game object. What we're going to be doing is we're going to be copying some of the code from the uh, image one over to here. So we can go ahead and we can come up and let's take a look at the create event. We just have an image speed. So let's throw that in image speed. And actually what I'm going to do is since we're making this smart, I'm going to have a variable for solid target. And what I want to do is I want to create this sprite. I'm sorry, this object solid on top of this door. So I'll say instance equals instance create layer at the X and Y position of this door. And I'm gonna throw on a different layer and that's why I have the collision layer up there. And I'm just gonna call it OBJ underscore solid. And by doing that, we should have created a object on top of this door. However, if we run this game, we should see a little bit of an error. And you can see it's just a tiny little green dot. So if I were to place my character in this room, uh, probably not on the collisions one, but place him in there, and I hit F5. So this is just some basic platformer code. I can go into the door until I hit that little green dot. And that's obviously not what we want. So we're gonna have to scale this up to mit to uh, match the door width and height. And to do this, we'll do it in the create event because we just created it here. So we'll just say scale up. So what we need to do is we need to find out the height that we need to scale it to. So we'll say height scale equals the sprite height. So this is the sprite height of the door divided by the solid target dot sprite height. And we can just copy this line of code and we can do the same thing for the width just to make sure we change all the instances of height into width. And then once we're done with that, we could say the solid, whoops, solid underscore target dot image x scale equals the width scale and the y scale is going to be equal to the height scale. Now if we hit F5, that should increase our solid object to the area that we have based on our door. All right, so now that that's done, well, I should have tried, I should have made sure that we couldn't collide with any different objects there. You can see I can't go in anywhere um, in that door right now. So that object is working perfectly. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to go up to our door and we're gonna right click on room start and just copy that event into the solid door here because we still need to make sure that we know the levers that are going to be attached to this particular instance here. 
And just like before, we have a user event zero. So let's copy that event and paste it into our solid door. Okay, so this part of the code, we can leave the same because that's the way it's going to be. Now we can say if we can unlock, our image index is going to switch to one, which is the door open. The next thing I want to do is I want to say instance destroy, and I want to destroy the solid target. Once I've destroyed the collision, I want to set that to no one. So if I do this right now and I hit F5, you should see that as long as everything is set up, I have that collider there. When I turn that on, I can now walk through my door, but when I turn it off, I can still walk through the door. So let's make it so once we've turned it off, which is this else statement, let's make sure that we recreate that solid target. So we could say if solid target equals no one, then in here we want to say solid underscore target equals instance create layer at the x and y and we're using the collision layer and an object of solid and all we need to do is go to the create event here and copy the scale up code and i'm just going to paste it right below here and just tab it in a little bit and that actually should be it i think that's all we need to do so let's hit f5 let's run our game you can see that the collision object is around here i can turn it or i can open the door i can walk through it and when i close the door i can no longer walk through it because that collision object is on there as well and the nice thing about this is because how we've done everything we can set up we can just drag and drop different levers um, let's actually use the solid door each time so we can do a whole bunch of different things and we can make different puzzles as long as you remember you're going to go to the variable definitions and make sure that that gets changed. So I'm just going to quickly do door B. I'm going to say it needs to be enabled and that set up to door B and this one will be door C. We just want to make sure everything is going to work. Hang on with me for one more minute here. Variables, change that, make sure it's um, that one we want off and this one we want on and with that door C okay let's hit F5 we shouldn't be everything should be hooked up if we've done everything correctly all right so I should be able to open that door and I can walk through it and that's just because of the depth of my character you could probably put your character on another screen I do that perfect I can unlock that one and I can lock it and nice so you can see everything is working i would say the only real issue that uh, you would have with some system like this is or it's really anything but if you open your door and your character is you know halfway through or something you'll want to make sure like i can't move my character anymore but you'll want to make sure that you push your character outside to whatever the free area is all right awesome i'd like to thank you for watching this video and a special shout out to my patreon supporters such as Paul, Wayne, and Jean, and as well as any anonymous supporters. Please like and share the video if you can, and have an awesome day.